Hello, happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. Maybe clap hand Thursday. Doesn't feel like a party doodle Friday, so. Ah, Elliot's got the party doodle anyway. He's bringing the party. Thank you, Elliot. How about people who's on Friday? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Party doodle Friday for Dewan and um, Danny. How about that? I have only clap, so oh, I'm going to send clap. <laughs> All right. Um, oh man, we are we are ripping our way through equilibrium too. How are you guys feeling about equilibrium so far? Am I going too fast? Good, good. Usually, I just look back at, at our year last year, and this took me four days to give the presentation that that I've given to you guys so far. I, there was like some demos and stuff that was involved that I couldn't do for obvious reasons this year. Um, but send me a private message if you guys are feeling overwhelmed. I don't want to put you guys on the spot to like give me the oh no face or anything like that. But if you guys are feeling overwhelmed, why don't you um, send me a private message now and we can slow it down just a little bit as we get into the second part of the first part of equilibrium, Le Chatelier's principle. I think that this part is, is probably a little bit more difficult to, to kind of wrap our heads around um, than that first than the first half. So if you're if you start to feel overwhelmed here, you know, obviously share that with me. It's better than sitting in in ignorance and feeling like you're you're a fool, even if again, you know, I, I've told you guys this a bunch of times in the past, but if you are feeling overwhelmed, the chances of you being the only one are almost zero. Right. So be sure to share that information with me. Communication, I think, is really key. <laughs> <clears throat> it's not what I asked for, but I appreciate it. I can, I'll do, maybe I'll, maybe I'll do my best. So maybe I'll add a little bit of extra information there for those of you guys who are looking for a little bit more of a challenge. Okay, well, if you guys don't have any questions and you guys feel like we're um, moving at a pretty okay clip, I, today is going to be a Socrative day. So let me start up the the Socrative stuff, so we just kind of have that rip roaring and ready to go, so we don't gotta slow down the pace once we start. Oh, did I close out of that? Gosh, Socrative, why do you make everything so difficult? Gave time for Leo to come in here too. Ooh, they just added something where I can give you guys only one attempt. So you can't uh, reverse your answers and then come back at me when I give you the answers after time. So I'm not gonna do that too, but it's interesting that they just added that. Maybe they'll allow me to see your names too. That would be nice. So the, the, the Socrative is up, um, rip roaring, ready for you guys to go. I'm gonna do my attendance really quickly. You guys are gonna, gonna see the, the vague outline of that in the background, because I was reprimanded yet again. I skipped one day of attendance and they got real mad at me. Apparently I have to keep track of you for your physical and mental well-being. All right, who do we have in here? Who are we missing? Hayden, there we go. That's one more. Chase, nope, Chase is in here. Aaliyah, Aaliyah's missing. Mm -hmm. Why we have fewer, fewer people after the break? Well, Lisa is still, I think, in commute. I think she is still trying to make her way back over here to the States. Why? I don't know, you know? We literally have armed insurgents in the Capitol building. So why you'd want to come to America right now is beyond me. But, you know, uh, maybe it's for, for this treasured class and, and for others. And maybe it's for her friends. Who knows? You know, people are strange. Um, I know some other people are having some family stuff going on, too. So that's that's why they are they're absent. Um, but nobody's dropped. We should have we should have the same number once everything kind of gets reorganized. Um, Nobody's dropped out for second quarter, for second semester. So, all right, looks like just a couple folks. Oh, I just missed that. By the way, Mr. T, 
<clears throat> I saw I saw a lot of news about the vaccines, and uh, you know the Northeastern University is uh, providing vaccines to the students. So, mm -hmm. do you expect you know TA would do that as well, or do you expect that we would back into school like in a few months? I I hope so. I, I know that the vaccination rollout is a lot slower than than people expected. It's an awful lot slower than than I expected. You know, once once the first responders are vaccinated, I thought that it was just going to kind of roll on to that those those second degree. So that would be um, you, international students, and and me, the teacher. Hard to say. You know, given that we are a private public, given that we are a, a town academy, we're kind of in a weird place in terms of like uh, the government rollout for the vaccination. And I don't know, I haven't had, we have a, we have a um, staff meeting tomorrow morning at eight in the morning. So um, who knows what they're going to say tomorrow. My guess is about the, the async, the, I'm sorry, the, um, what do they call it? Hybrid model. If we're going back to the hybrid model next week or not, um, but they might say something about, about vaccination as well. I think once this kind of rigmarole with the capital ends up being cleaned up, the chances are good that the rollout of the vaccination is going to really increase. You okay. know, I know that Biden, Biden has said that a number of times in the past. So, you know, keeping, keeping our fingers crossed, I think we'll probably be back in school March, mid-March. Okay. You know, maybe they'll wait until after, right. Maybe they'll wait until after spring vacation, but I, I doubt it. I, I think we're probably going to be back before then. Okay. Again, no, that's my, my general vibe based on the, the information I've heard. And, you know, it's, it's kind of a guess. So take it with a grain of salt. Anything else before we get rolling on this, this next set of presentations? Okay, then here we go. The next thing we're going to, so hopefully you guys have some understanding of what equilibrium represents, right? A, a reaction that is kind of moving in the product's direction at the same rate that it is returning to its reactants, not necessarily in equal amounts, but when the reaction rates of those two reactions are equal. Oh, Haley, you're going to come in here twice? Hmm, hmm, what's going on there? Can you guys see this okay? Or is that too big? Shrink this down a little bit. Okay, there we go. And make sure I'm recording because I've done that in the past too many times. Okay, recording. All right. So let's talk about how we can now manipulate that equilibrium, right? So we've talked about when we reach equilibrium and we've talked about how that is temperature dependent. And then we talk about if we add a product or, or we take away a reactant, we can shift the equilibrium position to a, a quotient, and then it will shift its way back to that equilibrium. How can we control, right, using equilibrium, you know, to make more product or to, to make less product in a reaction um, as we want, right? That's kind of the job of a chemist is to manipulate equations to generate compounds that are desired, be them, you know, drugs, be them, you know, fuel for combustion or, or whatever, right? We want to manipulate chemical reactions to some degree so that we have some control. And, and Le Chatelier is a scientist who ended up doing that very, very well and, and dictated a couple of rules about how we can manipulate a reversible reaction as to control either producing more products or more reactants. So today we're going to talk about his principle, and that is shifting the equilibrium position, right? We can't really change the equilibrium constant without changing the temperature. So, so this is either adding product or adding reactant in order to shift it, or we can do a couple of other things as I'm going to describe today. But basically what he says is um, we can shift either toward the reactant or toward the, react, toward the product by adding a stressor, right? It could be pressure, it could be a change in temperature, it could be adding more product or more reactant, right? Those are the ways that we can stress an equilibrium in order to, to now offset that equilibrium and force it to return to an equilibrium with a new equilibrium position. Um, we can change temperature, we can change concentration, we can change the pressure, and, and by changing the volume, we'll be changing the pressure. Um, and 
we have to be careful of inert gases. Inert gases are really tempting because if we add them to a, to a uh, closed container, we know that we're going to change the overall pressure, but it's actually kind of a, a red herring. It's not actually going to change our reaction. So let's just jump right into it and, and give it a little bit of thought. Let's say that we have a gas and that gas is endothermic, right? So this reaction is endothermic. Anybody want to remind me of what endothermic means? It releases heat. <clears throat> Incorrect. It takes in energy. Oh yeah. Um, gotcha. Yeah, I think that's the first time. Stuff. Right. I think that's the first time that uh, you have not been correct there. So we can rewrite this equation actually as if heat was one of the reactants. Right. This needs heat energy to uh, to to cause this reaction. So we're going to add heat, and that is going to help us to yield this product. Right. Um, I'm going to make this a delta H because why not? We'll call that enthalpy two. Uh, so we add heat to A and that will cause it to decompose. And that happens all the time, right? Uh, a lot of times with decomposition, if you if you add heat, it will increase the rate of decomposition because you're, you're, you're really stressing those microstates. You're making those bonds stretch as it kind of like bounces against other things and it's more likely to snap those chemical bonds. All right, so let's say that we're at equilibrium uh, where A has a concentration of five or, or is at five moles and B um, is at one molar and, and these can be directly, uh, because we're in a one liter container, we can just say that this is molarity too, right? Five moles per one liter is going to make it a five molarity um, reaction here. And we're going to hold the temperature constant. And if I'm going to add five moles of A, right, how would that system respond? And I'm already up on Socrative. So if you guys haven't jumped into Socrative to answer those, why don't you guys get in there now? If five moles of A were added to this, how would the system respond? Assuming we can keep the concentrate, excuse me, excusing we, uh, t -t 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 assuming we can keep the temperature constant. The way that I would approach this, so I've already got my balanced equation. I would then generate myself an equilibrium expression, right? K is going to equal the concentration of my products over the concentration of my reactants. So we know that the molarity is of, of B right now is one, one squared. God, that makes it so much easier, right? A is five to start with. And we're gonna change this to 10. And when, whenever we change one of the concentrations, we're shifting from an equilibrium to uh, a quotient, right? Before it shifts back. So we can describe this new situation as Q is one squared over 10 squared, oh, excuse me, one over 10. So here, my equilibrium is one over five or 0.2. Here it is 0.1, right? Q is less than K, meaning we have to do what? We gotta make this top number get bigger so that we can reach this larger number again. All right, so we have to generate more. It starts with P, ends in product. I'm gonna shift to the, let's see, I'm gonna check to see how many of you guys answers. Where's my, oh, they changed all this. Oh, there it is, show, show results. Yo, we're all over the place. Of the seven students that have answered, zero students have answered this correctly. Yikes, maybe it was a bit too fast. Um, so most of you guys ha have got the shift in the correct direction, right? We are going to shift to the right um, to make more product. The, the issue that, that the lot of you guys have had is whether or not we're going to change our K. The point of having an equilibrium constant is that the, the equilibrium will find that number regardless of concentration, assuming we're keeping our temperature constant. The only thing that we can do to a reaction to change the equilibrium constant is to change the temperature. So, so anytime you see 
holding the temperature constant or at temperature at constant temperature or whatever it says about temperature, so long as it is remaining the same, that K is going to be the same. Always, 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 regardless of catalyst, regardless of pressure, regardless of everything else, if temperature stays the same, the K is going to stay the same. So immediately we can knock some of these away, right? Both of these that are the majority of your answers are gone. We know that there's going to be no change in K. So now we only have to sh think about which direction this is going to shift. Do we need more, pro more product or do we need more reactant? If we need more product, we're going to shift toward the product side. That's the right side of the equation, regardless of our, you know, we, I know that we can reverse it, but whatever side is on the right is our product, is considered our product. So in this case, we've got to shift to the right. There's not going to be a change in K. Does that make sense to the eight? Of, oh, there's 10 of you guys now who have joined this. Does this make a little bit more sense? Good, good, good deal, good deal. So what we would say in terms of Le Chatelier's principle here, adding more reactant is going to stress the left side of that reaction, right? It's going to stress the reactant side of that reaction to alleviate that stress on the equilibrium. It has to shift to the other side to balance it back out, right? If you're imagining this as kind of a scale, and I pile a bunch of stuff onto one side, some of that stuff has to kind of move over to the other side to reach balance. Now, my question for you guys is this, is the concentration of A after it reaches equilibrium once again, greater than, equal to, or less than the initial concentration of A? Let's imagine my scale again. Right, my initial balance is five whatevers, right? We'll make them cubes. Right, on one side of that scale. On the other side, we have one. I add five more on this side. Right, way unbalanced now. It balances back out by shifting some of these over here. Is this side going to be five? It's so awkward. I promised myself I would not answer them myself. I'm going to just sit here in this awkward silence until someone. Um, I don't think it would be five. Thank you, Caitlin. Party doodle for you. <laughs> I, I can't do it because I'm sharing my screen, but know that you're a party doodle in my heart, right? We, we wouldn't, right? As they shift from left to right, we're still going to have more uh, reactants than we started with. It's just going to be balanced out by generating more product until that ratio ends up being the same, right? So, so we're not going to come back down to five because then we would have too many products. We'd have to shift back to make more reactants if that were the case anyway. Beautiful. Thank you, Caitlin. Excellent work. And you're absolutely correct. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so here we have uh, the, the, the mathematics behind how we might go about solving this. Um, in order to do these mathematics, you end up with kind of a gross rice table, right? Where we end up with uh, a rice table that has A uh, minus X and B plus 2x. And we know that our end result for this value is going to be 0 0.2 because equilibrium constant has not shifted, right? We have not changed the temperature. So our, our reaction has to look something like this. So our new concentrations are going to be our initial concentration plus whatever the change is going to be. We end up doing some gross quadratic, end up with these values. A is now significantly larger than it was, right, to start. At, at the beginning, it was 5. Now it's 9.8, right? B ends up being much less because, remember, our B concentration ends up being squared. So we can find that balancing point much more easily uh, with a squared concentration. So again, that's for you. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, let's take another consideration. We're going we're to change kind of what's going on here. And I want you guys to think about what's going to happen in this reaction. 
consider the gas reaction A uh, plus 2B and it's endothermic. So we can draw our, add our little heat over here. And um, we're going to have a, an equilibrium where we have an equilibrium that starts with five moles or, and B is, oh, excuse me, suppose we're at equilibrium when 10 moles, but we're in a two liter container and B is two moles, but we're in, a, we're in a two liter container. So we're starting with more moles, but we have a larger container. Then we shrink the container. What happens to our equilibrium? So we're starting with the same concentration, five molar and one molar, which would give us our, our, our K constant of 0.2. We shrink down that container. How is the system going to respond? Again, I would start by generating my equilibrium expression. Here I've got one squared, five. When I shrink my container, right? I can rewrite it that way because I'm doubling my concentration by having my volume. I'm doubling my concentration. Zoom in here. No longer at our constant, so we can't call it a K. Instead, we're going to call it a Q. Q is now larger than our K. Too hot. When our Q is larger than our K, which direction are we going to shift in? Products are too much. Hey, Ilya made it. Oops. Hmm. That's not what I wanted to do. Submit, dang it. There we go. So when our Q is larger than our K, we have too many products, so we've got to shift or the reactants, that's the left-hand side. Um, I can understand why you guys might say C, right? Given that we're not, we're not adding any more of our product or adding any more of our reactants, I can understand why you'd say that. However, because of the stoichiometric ratio, right? Because that we have uh, that, that squared value and because we are, um, we're making more moles of there's there's when we compact that concentration right we're changing one side to a larger degree than we're changing the other side right think about it in terms of the, the number of collisions right i don't know if aaron stam taught you guys collision theory i think that you guys were kind of like at that time um, when when covid struck so collision theory is the the more frequently particles are able to collide the more reactions are going to be right so if we have twice as many molecules uh of B than we have of A, and they're now closer together, they're gonna to run into each other far more frequently, right? Where A, because there are fewer of those particles, right, stoichiometrically, they're gonna run into each other uh, less frequently and form B and break apart into B less often. Yeah, no problem, home slice. And that is life. All right, does this make sense? 
questions or concerns? A greater number of you guys got this one right. And I'm proud to say nobody selected four or five, right? Temperature stayed constant. So we know that our K value is going to stay constant, right? So we can completely ignore four and five. Here is the explanation. Right, the container gets squashed, the partial pressure of the gases in each container increases and increases on the right hand side to a greater degree than on the left hand side, because again, stoichiometrically, we have a greater number of particles there. Right, and as I showed you guys with the mathematics above, K is less than Q, we know that we have to shift to the left. If you're feeling overwhelmed right now by the concept of equilibrium, you can always fall back to, to mathematics. I don't love that, as you guys know, I'm, I'm much more of a conceptual, the concepts are important, uh, far greater than the mathematics or, or getting the questions right or anything like that. I much prefer you guys grasp the concepts, but as a fallback in equilibrium case specifically and next unit when we talk about reaction rates, you'll definitely be able to fall back on mathematics. This is true here as well. It's true for most of chemistry, but, but in particular, our equilibrium in, in these computations. And there's some more you know, evidence if we wanted to go solve what the new equilibrium position would be, right? So, so we add it, we, we squish these down, we now have too many products, you know, it returns back to some equilibrium, but it is not the initial equilibrium position, right? Our ratios are forced to change, there are new values. Next question. Consider the gas uh, phase reaction, A yields 2B, it is endothermic. We've done this many times now. K is equal to 0 0.2. Suppose we are at the equilibrium when we have a, uh, a molarity of five and a molarity of one. Again, temperature remains constant. If half of the moles of the B were removed, so now we are taking products out. And this happens quite often, right? If B is a gas um, that we want to harvest, right? Uh, ammonia or whatever, right? If B is a product that we want out of the system, we suck that gas out of the system. And now we, you know, the molarity drops, the concentration drops of B, the partial pressure of B drops. What happens to our system? Mathematically, we can set up our equilibrium expression, K, C. Our Q is now Now we can do my very favorite thing in mathematics, multiply by the reciprocal of the divider. Hmm. Wait, did I do that right? Something's, something's amiss. We have to shift to the right. Yeah, we're shifting to the right. I think I did this wrong. Did I do that wrong? Shouldn't be five over four, that's not right. It's a much smaller number than that. Is it five over four? What am I doing wrong here? Somebody help me. Point five. Wouldn't it Hold be on. one over 20? One over 20, probably. That sounds right. That's, that's far more likely because it makes a lot more sense in terms of the chemistry. Why can't I multiply the reciprocal of the divider there? Um, well, five would usually be five over one, but then you switch it around to one over five, don't you? One over five. And then times the one over four. Oops, the one over four. And then you get that. One over 20. That makes a lot more sense. Mr. T, you can take honors algebra two. Now, <laughs> and I will, I will recommend it. I'll recommend that <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin, right? It has been a, a very long time and it is clear that, God, how many algebraic errors have I made this year? An awful lot. I cannot be in a room by myself for very long before I start going mad. All right, so uh, thank you, Caitlin. Thank you, Kevin, for the recommendation. That's, I hope that you write a letter. Who's teaching Honors Algebra 2 this year? Slack? I'd love to take a Slack class. Guy is hilarious. 
All right, moving on. So what we end up with is a significantly smaller Q than we have K. All right, we need to make that, that value bigger. So in this case, we need to shift to the right. Ah, there's me. So frustrated. No change in K. All right. I think that most of you guys got this one right. We are slowly but surely gaining in confidence here. We're not going to make more reactant unless you do your algebra wrong like I did. That's why I don't ever fall back on the math and really rely <laughs> entirely on my chemistry uh, and the concepts that are there. In. And again, I do the, you know, when I'm given the time, I do the solution for the uh, new equilibrium position. All right, next question. So again, these are all stresses, and, and we're, we are practicing what Le Chatelier would call stressing our equilibrium, right? We're either adding product or removing product, or we're adding uh, concentration, or we're changing the concentration in such a way as to shift our equilibrium. Suppose at equilibrium, we have the same thing that I've said 10 million times. If the reaction vessel is placed in a room in an ice bath, how would the system respond? Now, I'm going to rewrite this before I do my equilibrium expression. Plus heat. Find some equilibrium with 2B. Unfortunately for you, you math whizzes out there, in this case, you have to actually rely conceptually on the chemistry here, right? You can, however, Think of this as a reactant, right? If this, think of this as kind of like a gatekeeper. We need some amount of this to make this transform into this. If we don't have enough of this, this reaction is not going to happen, right? Which means what? K gets smaller. Oh, right. In this case, we're actually going to have K, so we can ignore all of these guys up here, right? Our concentrations can't change, but we know we're going to shift the equilibrium, right? We know we're going to shift the equilibrium because we're not going to make as much of this, right? We're going to have more reactant than we have product in our initial scenario, right? So instead of of changing the rea the the ratio, which I can't. Right, not not um, under standard temperature. Uh, when the temperature changes, my K is going to change, and when my K changes, in this case, K is going to get smaller because my equilibrium will be reached with a larger reactant, which is in my denominator, than product, which is in my numerator. Beautiful work. Mm -hmm. How do you guys feel about that? I love that question. Le Chatelier's principle, the, the gross majority of the time when, when we are doing chemistry in the lab, the way that we manipulate reactions is actually by shifting the temperature. We, we, we rarely try to like pack in a bunch of the concentration to shift the equilibrium. However, in the stoichiometry uh, of the, the brass lab, the, the, the spectrometry lab, that C1 lab, in that case, we're actually going to really increase the molarity of my acid, and increasing the molarity of my acid is going to shift my equilibrium uh, in order to, to actually generate a whole new reaction. So there are some scenarios where we do shift concentration. It's, it's, it's rare. It's, it's far more rare than when we shift temperature. Easier just to shift the K around than to really kind of like push new product or push new reactant. All right. Questions or concerns so far? How are we doing? Good? I have a, a ton more practice problems. How do you guys feel about this, this process? Would you prefer if I just told you all this stuff or are you guys digging these questions? Give me the party doodle if you're feeling this or the thumbs up, that's cool too. Cool, 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 cool. All right, I'll try, you know, it takes me a significant amount longer to, to generate multiple choice questions. I, you know, so on those days that I'm not feeling super lazy, we'll do it this way. All right, consider the gas phase reaction. We've said it 10 million times, I'm not gonna read it again. But in this case, the inert gas helium is ejected into our system. So we have an inert gas, it's injected into our system. I gave you a hint and a wink and a nudge earlier in this lecture to talk about what might be the consequence of injecting an inert gas into the system. 
temperature is held constant. I would encourage you guys in this case to remember Dalton's laws of partial pressure, where the total pressure of a system is equal to the partial pressure of each of the of each of the components of that system. Right, maybe that will give you some hint as to why this answer ends up being what it is. Oh, tut tut, tut tut. Holding temperature constant. How about that? Hopefully that, so that's our initial scenario. If I, I, yeah, obviously I'm making that up, but we'll say initially, right? The atmospheric pressure of, of A and B are five sixths and one sixth respectively. If I add, let's say, you know, 10, uh, how do I want to do this? If I say, let's add 10, whatever of whatever, right? What we're going to end up with is, you know, a new pressure of eight. This would be five of eight, and this would be, no, that's, that's not the way to do it mathematically. The ratio of these are going to stay the same regardless of whatever I add over here, right? The, the, the initial, the, those pressures are going to change um, in the same vein. So when we add an, an inert gas, it does not change my partial pressures of each of those in that system, right? The concentrations will stay the same. And if the concentration stays the same, then our, um, then our, our, our equilibrium does not shift. And if the, the temperature stays the same, then our equilibrium does not shift. If that makes sense. Okay. This is kind of a throwback. I would draw your attention here. Right? So I'm going to draw your attention to the and remains at a constant temperature, which should eliminate some of these options immediately. But if the container were now increased in size from one liter to two liters, what would happen here? Our initial equilibrium. Our new reaction quotient. Not going to mess around with this algebra because I tried that once before. It failed me miserably. But I 
I think I know before I open my stupid fat mouth. I thought so. Oh, wait, what? Oh my gosh, oh, I, I'm such a fool. I forgot that I changed the question. I'm such an, uh, an ass, my, my bad guys, my bad. <laughs> Those of you guys that answered A, that's what I would have written. Just read the full question twice, really got myself there. Very embarrassing. That's two huge mistakes that I've made today. Oh, please don't tell anybody. I'll be fired. I need this job. I have a family. <laughs> All right. Um, so I changed the equation on us. In this case, our stoichiometric ratio ends up being one to one. Right. So mathematically, I'm going to come back down here and change that to this. Right. And because these ratios end up being the same, uh, that means that this value would be 0. 0.5. And that means that this would be wrong. This would also, this would be one half. That means that this would be wrong. Half, and then that means this would be wrong. Nah. Which is equal to 0. 0.2, which is our initial value. Tut, 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 temp goods. Get it together, man. Okay. Does everyone... In see where I made my error. Again, you have my apologies. I should have been more careful and read the question, the full question. Even though I wrote the question, I really forgot where I was at. All right, there's the mathematics behind it. Let's do a really brief summary of Le Chatelier's principle as we have uh, observed it up to this point. If the stress is placed on the equilibrium, right, we have to relieve that stress somehow. If we have too many products because we added products, it will relieve itself by generating more reactants right? and vice versa, right? If our stoichiometric ratio is such that one side has more molecules than the other side, like our initial equation A equals 2B or A is an equilibrium with 2B, right? If we change the pressure on, on that system, it will change the pressure on the side with the greater stoichiometric ratio um, to a greater extent. So if we're, if we're manipulating pressure, the thing we're going to look for is our stoichiometric ratio. If we're changing temperature, our K will change. And that is the only time that our K is going to change, right? Once we realize that the K is going to change, we then have to see if it's going to be bigger or smaller. And then we will shift our uh, equilibrium um, in concert with that. Uh, if it is endothermic and we decrease the temperature, right, we're going to increase the amount of product. If it's exothermic and, oh, sorry, if it's endothermic and we decrease the temperature, we're going to decrease the amount of product. If it's exothermic and we decrease the temperature, it's actually going to increase the product, right, because if you imagine the heat has to go somewhere, or um, the, old, the old fallback is treat heat like it's one of the reactants. You know, if heat goes up, it's stressing that side. Uh, it, in the same way like adding a reactant or a product would. Now, how constant is our K constant? C -c constant, get it? Because it's the same sound because English is stupid. Um, equilibrium constant, right? How constant? It varies with temperature. Does not depend on the initial concentration, does not depend on the final concentration. We can change the equilibrium position, right? And that's what Le Chatelier was famous for. You change the equilibrium position, but we cannot change that constant unless we change the temperature. Uh, um, what are those things called? Catalysts don't matter. Enzymes don't matter, right? Biologically, we even manipulate this with temperature. There's no other way for us to do it. Well, biologically, we also use membranes. Membranes are super fun for that, right? We can like spit you know, high concentrations of chemicals out of the cell and therefore out of the system. But that's way too deep. Sorry, I'm, I'm going off on a bit of a, a ramble. How are we feeling? Do we want more practice? You want a break? Three minutes. Let's take three minutes, stretch out, right? Let me get my brain right. 
Maybe I'll read ahead to make sure I don't make any more stupid errors. Give, give myself a little cheating advantage on you guys. Yeah, let's take three minutes and, and take a quick break. All right, come on back to me. Let's get a little bit more practice in here. Um, we're going to give some actual values. Uh, maybe that will help, uh, at least with my mathematics, in terms of kind of what's going on here. Uh, we, we've also added a kind of a new wrench in the works, and that is something I'm not going to remind you of and see if I catch anybody with. In this case, we have two equilibrium constants. Right. In our first scenario, we're at 600 degrees. At our second scenario, we are significantly cooler at 100 degrees. Our uh, equilibrium constant goes from 3.5 to 45. Right. No, wait, oh no. Here we go. Is this an exothermic, an endothermic, or there's no way of knowing since the energy, blah, 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 blah.
Yeah, saying blah blah blah. Maybe I should. Maybe I gave that one away a little bit. Nobody selected the, the third option. All right. So, so the first thing that I would do when when I look at this, I have to think, uh, you know, well, how is my equilibrium shifting as I change my temperature, right? So my temperature is very hot at the beginning, and I create very few products. That means that if I needed heat to make those products, I would make an awful lot more in that first scenario, right? My second one, a lot of products at a lower temperature means that um, I, I, if I have heat, then my products revert back to my reactants, right? This means that I'm, that my products cannot go backwards, right? That I'm stuck with my products once I have them at that lower temperatures. So when I rewrite this reaction, the way that I would rewrite this reaction would be, oh, oh, my pencil's dead. I would rewrite the reaction with heat on the right-hand side. Does that make sense to everybody? All right. This would be exothermic. Let's try this one. In this case, I've got PCl3, uh, which is a gas, uh, phosphate tetrachloride, and I've got chlorine gas, and I make phosphate pentachloride. The reaction above the system is the equilibrium with total pressure of six atmospheres. If the volume were doubled, so my volume is increased by a significant degree, how would it affect the concentrations of these? Right, which concentration would be more greatly affected? In essence, I'm reducing the concentrations of one side of this reaction to a, a greater degree than I am the other side. So I'm effectively taking out either product or reactant. I would start Something like that. You need to make up some value for them to be six. All right, so we're just going to say 12. That's obnoxious. Make it six. One and one. All right? Then I double the volume so this becomes three, 0.5, and 0.5. So if we think about now how much we have changed each of these partial pressures, one of them has been changed to a, a more significant degree. Right, so we got 0.25 in the bottom, we have three at the top. Right, now can I multiply by the reciprocal of the divider? I think so. Ends up with 12. That's my equilibrium. So I've gone from six at equilibrium to 12 at equilibrium. It means that uh, my Q is too big. Now, how do I know that it's going to be less than, uh, more than three, but less than six? Well, I know that it's going to be less than six because my, I'm going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me. Uh, I know that it's going to be less than six because I the I'm going to generate more of the, the product on my right-hand side. Oh, excuse me, the, uh, cause a shift toward, uh, yeah, it, uh, <laughs> so the volume increases, right? It decreases the pressure in an attempt to make up this pressure change, shifts toward more molecules, but the pressure cannot come back to its original values because we just don't have enough molecules to do that, right? Uh, for the same reason why we had too much of A in the beginning, right? we're going to try to kind of come back to our equilibrium by making more of the reactants. But we're never going to have enough product, excuse me, we're never going to have enough molecules to come back to the initial because then this value would be too small. Right? So we shift in this direction. It increases, right? So at first it drops way, way down. And then it shifts back to generating more uh, of those particles. 
as we generate more of those particles, it increases the pressure in that vessel until we reach a new equilibrium uh, position, but it's never going to be the initial value. So it's going to be slightly less than six. Does that make sense? There, that, those are the numbers I should have used. More fool I. Um, I get why it can't be more than six. I mean, less than six. Oh, wait, yeah. It, why can't it be, um, why is it more than three? Sorry, because that was it's really messy. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. Because because when I when I have to all of my values, right, that means that we're at a Q. We're no longer at an equilibrium uh, of the same. So the initial con the pressure was the initial pressure was six, and in this case, uh, if we had two and two and two, that would add up to six, right? According to Dalton's partial pressure law. Mm -hmm. Then those were halved. So if it, if this was still at equilibrium, which it isn't. Right, then my partial, then my total pressure would be three. But because oh, okay. we have to shift, yeah, now you got it. Now, because we have to shift back toward equilibrium, um, these values are going to go up, right? This value is going to go down, and we're, we're not going to be, we're, we're not going to equal our equilibrium anymore. Got it. Um, I don't want to look deeper at the math. Mine just isn't there yet. Hello? Um, um, really quick question, like yeah. really. So back to the previous one. Um, like um, uh, just like if if measure come out with like um, it shift right, then is it gonna increase the value? Um, like hold on, is it gonna increase? The value. Oh, I forgot what you said. Like you said, if it shifts left, it should be great, greater than three, right? Be yes. Um. Like. Then, like no matter. I mean, it doesn't matter with the question. If it shift to right, is it gonna be lower than three? It depends on the equation. Yeah. So, so if this were, you know, opposite, if if we took the reverse of this, yeah. then then that would also be reversed. Uh, I'm not going to do it. But if we were to take the reverse of this, right, and we had more <laughs> molecules in our product than we had in our reactant, the the inverse of this would be true. Mm. Would it be true? No, we would still never reach reach six. Okay. Does that yeah. make sense? I feel like I explained that poorly. I guess. So <clears throat> in this case, because our Q is greater than our K, we're going to shift to the left. Right? We want more reactants, fewer products. So this number is going to increase. Oops. Right? But yeah. it's never going to reach two. Even if it did reach two, this number would be significantly smaller than one. Right. If this were two and two, this would be 0. 0.5, giving us a total pressure of 4.5. Right, stoichiometrically. Oh, that's the point. Like, if Q is um, lower than K, so if it shifts to right, mm -hmm. um, the number of the, the number from the bottom gonna be decrease, and the number at the top gonna be increase. Like, is yeah. it gonna be opposite? Okay. Like, I just yeah. So. If if we reduce both of these by half and ended up having this two, we would still only have a partial pressure of three, right? So we would never be able to get back to the original six. Oh. If this were a significantly, um, if, if we had, you know, more product, more reactants over here, you know, Mathematically, we could probably reach a pressure that was greater than six, depending on what our initial concentrations were. But this is more of a concept thing. Oh, if you okay. can set it up, if you can set it up like this, you should be able to figure it out. Does that make sense? Yeah, sounds good. Okay. All right. Here we go. Which direction will this reaction? So we've got A, two B, three C as our product, which reaction, um, which direction will the reaction shift when the pressure is increased by reducing the volume, no temperature change? 
So we reduce the volume. Half of the people who have answered have gotten it accurately. Four or five have gotten it correct. So in this case, by reducing the volume, we're effectively increasing the concentration of C to a larger degree because it has a larger stoichiometric ratio, right? Then we are for B, causing more collisions to occur would in fact shift it to the left. So far so good. My question is this. Right, really, what we have is a stoichi stoichiometric ratio of three reactants to three products, right? That's three to three. Why would we have any shift at all? I mean, we don't include solids in our equilibrium expression. Thank you, Ezra. I saw you leaning in to say that. Sorry to take steal your thunder there. Oh, shoot. Did I just give that away? Uh, yeah, nothing. No, I said nothing. I should have trusted myself on that one. All right. When in equilibrium, what happens to the moles of C if a small amount of A is added to the reaction vessel? And then you will see this quite often that they will say, a small amount of A, because if it were a very large amount, something else would change. Did I change this? Yes, I did. All right, we've got one minute left, so I'm going to jump in here. Initially, my brain immediately says, okay, we're increasing the, the amount of A. That means we are stressing the left-hand side of this reaction. Uh, in order to, to reach equilibrium once again, we'd shift to the right. And then, because I read the full question twice every time, I've never made a mistake there, and I've never been caught up by some trick in the question, I would see this solid. Right? Because solids are not part of our equilibrium expression, I would still have a change in the amount of A does not affect my equilibrium, assuming it does not it's not enough of that solid to change the volume of that vessel. Right, if you've got like a big steel rod or, or an iron rod or an aluminum rod that you're injecting to an oxygen to make you know, combustion of like, like thermite or something like that, then it might, right? If you've got a significant amount of a volume change due to the solid being added. But other than that, um, AP has never had a, a significant enough amount of solid in order to, to generate that change. You guys dig that? So far, so good? Let's, 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 let's leave it there. All right, we're almost done here. I think um, 
Next class, we've got Hess's Law assignment due. We've got your corrections for exam C due. Um, you have plenty to do over the weekend. You should be now well enough equipped to hammer away at the multiple choice and the free response questions. Let's make multiple choice due Monday and free response questions due next Thursday. So um, multiple choice one, so practice, practice test, D1, due Monday. FRQ, practice, D1, due Thursday. And I think tomorrow we're gonna go over the Hess's Law stuff. We're gonna finish these last 20 questions or so. And I will hopefully get in tomorrow morning to finally do Lab C1. Monday, we're gonna really take a close look at our lab data. Hunky Dory, everybody happy with that? Then I will see you guys tomorrow afternoon. Thank you all for being such excellent um, students and never telling the administration how many foolish errors I make. I really, really appreciate you guys keeping your lips nice and tight about how foolish I am. See ya. Bye. Bye, Zerky. Bye. Happy Friday. Bye, Mr. Key. <laughs> Bye, Leo. <laughs>